When we talk about ketamine infusions, I think we have to take a step back and really talk about central sensitization and what that means. Unfortunately, central sensitization is one of those conditions that's really not very well understood by most practitioners and really by uh, most people, you know, within healthcare as well as outside of healthcare. It's not something that's taught in medical schools. It's not even something that's really been focused on in uh, residency programs or fellowship programs. So what's central sensitization? Well, to put it very simply, central sensitization is what happens when your brain is exposed to certain experiences or certain memories. It's life. It's being a human. That's what it is. You know, when you have a certain memory that forms, it becomes part of who you are. It becomes part of your experience. And your behavior changes as a result of that. It's not something that just happens esoterically. It's not something that happens randomly. This is something that happens organically. This is something that happens to the neurophysiology of your brain. It forms memory. Those circuits get hardwired on your little hard drive that's known as a brain. That's the same thing that happens with pain. When you have a chronic pain stimulus, usually one of the first things that happens is your brain says, hey, don't do that again. But what happens when that signal doesn't stop and the brain keeps saying, don't do that again, don't do that again, and the brain keeps amplifying the pain in order to make you stop doing that again. And that's really the pathogenesis of what central sensitization is. When that process keeps occurring and that problem keeps worsening, that's when we see these central sensitization disorders. Now, I'll give you a few examples. You know, people have heard of these examples. They just haven't put two and two together. Anxiety, depression, fibromyalgia, CRPS, or complex regional pain syndrome, RSD, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, sometimes phantom limb syndrome, something else called opiate-induced hyperalgesia. Okay, these are all forms of central sensitization. And if you look at all of those diseases, the same pathology occurs. There's a traumatic event or some type of event, and it forms a memory, it forms an experience. And for some reason, the brain doesn't tell the body to stop, or the body doesn't tell the brain to stop, and that feedback keeps going on. It's called the wind-up phenomenon. And as that keeps progressing, you see brain matter changes, you see a neurophysiologic changes, you see you know, pathways being formed that are aberrant, where your normal pathways are no longer functioning the way they should. And once you understand that, once you recognize that, and, and it, quite frankly, it, it, to me, all chronic pain will develop to some element of central sensitization. So once you recognize that, you have to look at the body as both uh, organic and inorganic. You have to look at the body as both central and peripheral and identify what that disease is, break down that disease, and then treat that disease with whatever's appropriate. Now, let's say that patient now does have central sensitization. That's where we start getting into a conversation of whether a ketamine infusion is appropriate for that patient. So ketamine infusions have been around for many years, in fact, decades. And the drug ketamine has been around for half a century. It's been around for a long time. But for some reason, it's not very well understood by you know, both primary care physicians, pain management doctors, um, obviously the society, the media. When you look at ketamine as a molecule, it's binding to a major receptor called the NMDA receptor, the N-methyl D-aspartate receptor. Now that receptor is an incredibly complex receptor. It has many sub-receptors. And there are many products that can bind to the NMDA receptor, but a lot of them will have actually different effects because that receptor is so large in the sense of how many things can bind to it, it can have so many different effects. Okay, for example, there's a medication that's used for memory loss or Alzheimer's, and it binds to that receptor. Very different than ketamine, which binds to that receptor as well. Now, there may be a little cross-linkage in terms of its effect, but very different medications. So, ketamine can bind to this NMDA receptor and act as an antagonist, okay, sort of preventing that receptor's um, firing. And when it fires, in, in many situations, it's firing things like glutamate or glycine, which are excitatory compounds. When it keeps firing those excitatory compounds, that's when you start seeing this wind-up phenomenon occurring where the body doesn't stop. It just keeps going and going and going. 
So we want to try to bind that and reset that receptor. And that's really what a ketamine infusion does, is it resets that receptor. It gives that receptor a chance to stop firing for the first time since the injury occurred. Now ketamine is even more complex than that. We won't go into all the different ways that it works, but it works on multiple different mechanisms, but the main mechanism is that NMDA antagonism. Ketamine infusions, in my opinion, need to be done in a custom-tailored way. Doing a ketamine infusion is not simply sticking someone in a closet or putting them in some random room, hooking up an IV, and then bolusing them a bunch of drugs. That's not a ketamine infusion, in my opinion. Now, that does occur. And you know what? In some situations, I guess it might be better than nothing, but I get concerned about safety. So to me, it needs to be done like any other anesthetic, okay? It needs to be done in a controlled setting. It needs to be done in a monitored setting. And quite frankly, I think it needs to be done by someone who has an intimate knowledge about the anesthetic drugs that are being used, about uh, the side effects that can happen, about the interaction of those medications, about dosing of those medications, and really about tailoring that infusion so it works for that particular patient. And that's where I think the anesthesiology residency has really helped me because that's what we did in the OR all day long. So I really believe that these infusions need to be done in a control setting by someone who has a lot of experience with uh, performing an anesthetic and a lot of experience with someone who understands pain management and understands the disease. You can do two things as a physician. You can either treat the disease or treat the patient that has a disease. And I think it's incredibly important that you treat the patient that has a disease. You're not just doing the infusion to do the infusion. You're doing the infusion as part of their management tool, as, as part of their entire treatment protocol, so they can get better. So you, you, know, you do the infusion, you might reset some of the receptors. You may actually cause them to have a lower pain uh, threshold or a lower pain status. Their requirements for medications will be lower their outcomes may be such that they may be able to work or they may be able to sleep. They may be able to function. They may be able to do activities of daily living that they weren't able to do before. By doing a ketamine infusion, you're stopping the central sensitization component of their pain. But there may still be that peripheral or that organic component that needs to be addressed. And that can only be done by someone who is a qualified pain specialist who can really address those issues. I think it's incredibly important that whatever patient is referred for a ketamine infusion, that the physician who's going to be performing those infusions and staying there by their side, okay, during those infusions to make sure that everything is going well and make sure everything is customized to that patient, that patient needs to be assessed by that physician for both risks, benefits, you know, suitability for the infusion, uh, contraindications. You need to understand that patient intimately well and make sure that you comprehensively approach that situation so you can provide the best outcome possible. We have had patients who have had 100% relief with ketamine infusions. We've had patients who have had 100% relief with the central sensitization component, but 0% relief with the peripheral component. I believe central sensitization is a diagnosis that can be made in the primary care setting. It doesn't have to be a diagnosis that's made in the specialty setting. In fact, like I had mentioned before, there are physicians who claim to be pain physicians who are anesthesiologists who don't even understand it. And they're teaching at major programs. It's scary. It's scary. It's, you have four categories of pain that people really need to understand. You have nociceptive, you have neuropathic, you have inflammatory, and you have central sensitization. Those are the four categories, and, and once you understand that there are four categories, I think it allows you to make that diagnosis much more accurately. But if you don't understand that there are four, you're gonna miss a lot of diagnoses. I think the real, uh, the over, what we have to overcome is um, either the medical education that exists out there, both in the medical schools and the residencies, you know, they don't really do a good job of, of really teaching pain management. The other thing that we had to overcome is just, um, you know, time. I mean, physicians don't have a lot of time anymore. They don't have time to see their patients. They don't have a lot of time to learn. And the final thing that we have to overcome is just the willingness. You know, we have to, we have, to have physicians who want to do a better job. And I think if we have patient, if physicians that want to do a better job, we have better training 
at, at a younger age, you know, in the, in the training programs, and, and, you know, they're able to get a little more time to be able to learn these important things, I think we can make a dramatic change with our ability to diagnose as well as treat chronic pain patients.